good morning or good afternoon or evening depending on when you're watching our video. I want to welcome you to Play and Learn with Dr. Susan. I'm Dr. Susan obviously and I wanted to let you know that the time we're going to spend together is kind of putting on a detective hat. We're going to kind of be detectives for this next next half hour to 30, 30 minutes or so in detecting and figuring out how we can understand people's feelings. Not only our feelings, but pe other people's feelings that uh, sometimes baffle us and sometimes we don't understand how somebody feels a certain way. But we're going to be figuring out through uh, the book, it's called A Little Spot of Feelings, Emotion, Emotion Detective. And we've read several books about, uh, about the series Spots. They, they're very fun characters, and the author is Diane Alber, and, she, and she's also the artist that she does her own drawings, but they're really fun stories, and this one is about finding out about feelings, not only our own, but recognizing them in other people, in our family, in our friends, and, and sometimes just people that are um, uh, acquaintances, not somebody that we know super good, and that kind of thing. So we're going to take a look at this book and figure out how this happens and how we can actually do that. How can we can actually recognize that. And then we're going to make a, out of some different things out of the book, we're going to make a poster. And the poster is something that might be fun to have or might be a good idea to have yeah, maybe hanging in your room or even just recognizing how we're feeling. If we're feeling a certain way, what created that? How did we get there? And then the other important thing is how do we get out of it? So I know sometimes it feels like you get up in the morning, you get out of the, get out of the wrong side of the bed, they used to say, when you were grumpy or grouchy or, or you didn't get enough sleep or you didn't sleep well. There's lots of reasons. And um, sometimes you wish you could just crawl back into bed and make all that go away and start again. Well, you can, but you don't have to go back to bed to do that. So we're going to take a look at that and see how this little spot, the spot of emotion, uh, is going to help us discover how we can do that. And it's a fun game, fun way to do things. So let's take a look at that. All right. So the story time, and there's the spot. He's such a cool character. And a little spot of feelings. And we're going to become emotion detectives. And as we go through the story, possibly you can think of times and opportunities when you were feeling a certain way. So here we go. Hi, my name is Scribble Spot, and I am a little spot of feelings. I'm so good at spotting and naming feelings, I actually became an emotion detective. Well, there's our first clue. Spotting and naming feelings is how he became an emotion detective. So let's see what we can do. And the kids ask, how did you become an emotion detective? So I'm sure he's going to tell us all about that. It all started when I was tangled with emotions and I didn't know how I was feeling. So I spent a lot of time learning all about emotions. I learned that emotion spots can show up for many reasons. They can show up to help you when people say and do things and when things happen around you. Then these emotions start to create feelings. So as you can see on the next page, there's a lot of emotions sitting there and we have a little scribble down at the corner not understanding how he got there and what he's going to do about it. Feelings are very important. But when you don't know how you are feeling, it can be hard to explain what you need or how someone can help you. Sometimes an emotion can create too many feelings and they get all jumbled up together. So I made these feelings cards to help you name your feelings. So as you can see from the picture on, the, uh, on your right side of the screen, with the little boy and girl standing there and all the little emotions in all the different colors and facial expressions. And then over here, how it's all mixed up. So we'll see how that 
works out for us. When you learn how to name your feelings, it will help you get along with other people better and solve problems. Then you will be on your way to becoming an emotion detective like me. So these are some of the feelings that I imagine we're going to be talking about. There's a picture of peaceful, happy, angry, loved, anxious, sad, and confident. And one trick I use a lot in this feeling chart. Can you point out how you're feeling right now? Are you feeling joyful or goofy or happy or maybe uneasy about something or worried or anxious about something you have to do tomorrow or maybe a report at school or something? And then, how do you feel when you're appreciated by someone? Or when you're just confused about how things are going. So see the confused all the way in the corner. Way to go. You're already spotting your feelings. My feeling right now is positive and happy. I'm enjoying what I'm doing. So let's see. Another trick I like to use when spotting feelings is to look at a face, face movements, a person's face. Use a mirror to look closely at your eyebrows, your eyes, and your mouth. When you, and you will see they move when you show your feelings. Did you know that? Did anybody ever tell you just to try to make your face blank? I don't know how you make your face blank. So maybe some of these things will help us. These move, movements are called facial expressions. Facial expressions are clues to spotting feelings. Now on this one, eyebrows, eyes, and mouth. What do you think? I don't know. That little guy in the corner seems kind of peaceful, don't you think? Other clues are the way your body moves and how you stand. This is called body language. I imagine you've felt like that lots of times, where you're sad and, and just not feeling very good. And that may be what your face, your, your mouth is in a frown, and your eyes are looking down, and you look tired. Voice tones and volume are clues, too. Okay, we've all been to that little spot where the girl is. I think she's a little angry. You get that feeling from her face? <laughs> I think so. And sometimes sounds. Do you have sounds sometimes that hurt your ears and they make you all crunch up when, when a certain sound comes out of maybe the TV or radio or, or you hear somebody with a high-pitched voice? Sometimes that can give you, just make you cringe. Sometimes that happens. How, now, use these clues to spot your feelings and name it. Let's look at the peaceful spot. When it shows up, it makes you feel relaxed and calm. And these are some of the clues. Relaxed eyebrows, focused and le learning eyes, soft voice and breathing, ready to learn. Once you name it, the final step is to say it and give a reason why. Start with, I feel feel, let's see some of the things of how they feel. When, when do you feel peaceful? I feel calm when I draw. I feel relaxed when I listen to classical music. At ease, creative, great job. Now let's look at more feelings. This is the happiness spot when it shows, when it shows up. It makes you feel excited and delighted. Happiness clues are eyebrows raised, eyes are crinkly, mouth curves, mouth corners turn up and smile. When do you feel happy? Let's see what these kids do. I feel excited when I learn something new. I feel delighted when I make a new friend. So as we look at this particular page, we think about happiness. And then now we've learned two other ways that happiness shows up without, without using the word happiness. Excited is one and delighted is another. That gives us some clues. This is your love spot. When it shows up, it can make you feel loved and appreciated. Love clues are eyebrows raised, mouth turned upward, smiling, wrinkled eyes, blushing, and rosy cheeks.
When do you feel loved? Let's see. I, I feel appreciated when I get a thank you card. I feel loved when my dog kisses me. So there's a couple more words that goes with the word love. This is your anxiety spot. When it shows up, it could make you feel scared or nervous. And these are some of the clues. Eyebrows are turned up and wrinkled. Head and eyes look down, slouching and not smiling, maybe feeling sweaty and hot, and maybe a tummy ache. When do you feel anxious? I feel scared when I hear loud noises. Yeah, so do I. I feel nervous when I meet new people. I think we all feel a little nervous when we meet new people or new circumstances or situations. This is your sadness spot. When it shows up, it can make you feel sad or left out. These are sadness clues. Eyebrows turned up, watery eyes are crying, mouth turned down, hands covering face. When do you feel sad? Well, let's see here. I feel left out when no one will play with me. I feel sad when I miss someone. So there's a couple of other words that you can use when we have that feeling inside of us. This is your angry spot. When it shows up, it can make you feel frustrated or irritated. Anger clues are eyebrows are lowered or turned down. Eyes are very focused. Mouth is frowning. Strong voice and arms crossed. When do you feel angry? I feel frustrated when I can't find something or something doesn't work the way you want it to work. I feel irritated when I miss a basket. So those are two more words that relate to how we are feeling when we're feeling angry. This is your confidence spot. When it shows up, it makes you feel proud and brave. Confident clues are eyebrows are relaxed, good eye contact, mouth corners turned up and smiling, and a strong voice. When do you feel confident? Well, here's some times. I feel brave when I sing. I feel proud when I work hard. So there's a couple more words, brave and proud. Once you learn how to name your feelings, you will discover new things about yourself. It will also make you feel amazing. Do you know that being able to spot your own feelings helps you spot them in others? So look at the picture of the kids. What feeling is everyone experiencing here? Well, we can see sadness, and we can see anger, we can see loneliness, we can feel left out. The little boy with the basketball, remember he felt, he felt um, irritated because he missed. And the little girl with her legs crossed, she's peaceful. And uh, there's the little girl in the middle, she's dancing, so I'm assuming she's very happy and the little boy next to her. And then it looks like the little girl's laying on her tummy looking at a book. And she feels, she looks like she feels very satisfied and comfortable. So, are you ready to start training to be an emotion detective? Are you? Well, we have lots of ways in which we can do that. And that's the end of our story. I like the jiggly words, don't you? That makes me smile. All right. So, to put my clicker down. So what I thought we would do is I took the pictures from the book that Diane Ulver did. And she has in there the, um, the pictures of the, of the emotional chart that she was showing. And it's amazing how many different ways and words go with way you feel. And also the way that you sometimes feel other people and how they're feeling. It's like maybe if mom's had a bad day, you can kind of look at her face, and how is she feeling? What does her face look like? Does she look tired, exhausted, maybe frustrated, or whatever? If we see those things, then maybe we can think of a way we can help mom change that or feel better, like maybe assisting her in doing the dishes or fixing dinner or some of those things. So recognizing our own feelings and recognizing someone else's, and if we 
if we're paying attention, maybe it'll give us a clue as to what we can do to help move them out of that feeling if they're ready. You always have to make sure they're ready to be able to do that. Or can I help? Maybe I can do the dishes or something like that. But if we hit this, I wanted to play with this chart with you this morning because it gives us so many different words that go with feelings. And a lot of times we don't even think about that. So I'm going to start with the, with the picture that was in the, in the book. And that's, and that's what I did. And I so thank Diane, for, Diane Albert for creating these wonderful things that we can use. So I'm going to put some glue stick on this. And put it right here, emotion detective, that's right there. And clues to spotting feelings. So we're going to just put that here. And that's just to remind us as to why we do these particular things. And how that can help us not only with ourselves, but really help us with our relationships with other people. And some of the body things that they talked about was sometimes sounds uh, can create Un being uncomfortable and not knowing, um, you know, why someone's upset. So we're just going to, I'm just going to kind of put these in different places um, on the board. But one of the uh, other ones that we talked about is we talked about being calm and peaceful. So I'm going to, there's the clues that we looked at in the book. So we're going to put that over here just to get us started. So peaceful. Have you ever spent time after you've had a, a, a very busy day and you just wanted to sit and relax and not have to do anything that somebody needs you to do or a responsibility that you have, that you would just like to relax and just not do or be any particular thing? And creating ways to be peaceful is also a healthy way to help your body. So let's do this. We're going to put this one right here. I think you can see that. I'm going to turn it a little bit like this so you can see it on the camera. There we go. I think that works. Okay. And this one is peaceful. You see the little guy in there is peaceful right there. So and I know peaceful is already on this list. So I'm going to stick this little guy right over top of the word peaceful. So there's that. There's peaceful. And other words for peaceful are calm, relaxed, creative, and at ease. Did you know that when you're doing something that you really love to do and you really enjoy doing, it creates a very peaceful feeling inside of you. And sometimes it leads to excitement when, when you're creating something and it's really beginning to uh, materialize and, and be that thing you had in your mind. So when you're in that state of mind, in that state of physically feeling relaxed and peaceful, those ideas come easier to you. So on the other side of the board, we're going to go over here on this side, and I'm going to put that we heard voice, tone, volume, are clues also to feeling the very different feelings that we have about anger. So there's, the, there's anger in that corner. I think you can see it. Yes. And this one, and I'll read some of the words on this one, but sometimes we wouldn't even think that these words actually mean angry. You know, we wouldn't necessarily think that. So I'm going to put this one here. And this guy up at the top is angry. So we'll put that right over top of that. So some of the other words are angry, annoyed, mad, irritated, frustrated, and furious. Have you ever been furious with yourself for doing something that you just absolutely know that if you do that, this was going to be the way it was going to end up? And sometimes we forget, oh, I shouldn't do that. I'm going to share a little story I have with myself. I have this cup I have that I put my ice water in, right? It's about this tall, but I have a long straw. So the cup is here, and the straw is about this long. So it's like this. I did it twice yesterday, and I was very furious with myself because I wasn't paying attention. And I went to reach 
something on the other side of the bottle. And of course, my arm hits the straw and the bottle falls over and there goes the water, right? Ah, oh, so I have to stop really quick, put, pick up the bottle, clean up the water I spilled, and then I went this way and knocked it that way. That's another thing. I was really furious with myself. Why didn't I just move it out of the way? So <laughs> there's a sample of being furious with yourself. And it was like, oh my goodness, I know that. Why don't I just move it out of the way? Simple, simple solution. But sometimes when you're in those feelings, it's hard to think about simple solutions. It really is. So that's a sample of when I was furious with myself yesterday for knocking my water bottle over twice in about five minutes. Anyway, so there's that side. Now let's go back to this side. We're kind of bouncing back and forth about feelings and, and such because we can go from very happy feelings to very sad feelings, sometimes very fast. You could be in a really happy mood and then something happens. Maybe you get a phone call or mom has to tell you something and it makes you very sad. So sometimes our feelings change very fast. And, um, and when they do, we have some clues as to how we can change that. So this one is happiness. Clues are, and we read that on, in the book about raised eyebrows and crinkled and, well, you know what happiness looks like. And I know that you know what that feels like, too. And the words that they've used, and they've added, got a bunch of them. We're going to put this kind of right here. Happiness clues. They have, of course, the strip of happy. I'm going to put that one right here. And we'll read what those are. Now, if you want to get a copy of these, these uh, feel, spots of feelings, you can get on um, Diane Alver's website, and you can see it at the bottom of the screen, that uh, you can write that down, and you can get on her website. And also, if you look on her website, you'll find all kinds of other things about the other books that she's done, and other um, charts and different things that she's created. Uh, she's such an amazing lady. Okay, so here's our happy. So I'm going to kind of sand stand him kind of crooked like this. He's happy. He's kind of tilted, but that's okay. That's kind of happy. But some of the words that, that she says that shows happiness is being silly. I love to be silly. That's fun. Being silly, like I'm going to have half happy here and half happy down there. Delighted, optimistic, and great. Have you ever come home from school and say, Mom, I had a great day. And then you get to tell her about the day that you've had, or your dad, or anybody that's at your house. Maybe you have grandparents living with you. But anyway, so there's the one about happiness. And it's amazing the different words we can use to describe how we feel. So now we're going to go over here, too, because as we talked about before, sometimes happiness can turn to sadness if, if certain situations and things happen. And sometimes we adjust very fast, and sometimes we don't. But however we're feeling us, our feelings, and, and for other people to try to make them go away because it makes them uncomfortable, is very difficult to do. You have to feel what you're feeling and share how, what that is when someone doesn't understand why you're feeling the way you feel. Okay? So that's kind of important to remember. So this one is sad. So I'm going to put this down over here. This has so many different ideas and uh, ways in which we can discover and recognize this. And like it said in the book, and when you're able to recognize that about yourself, you have the opportunity to change it if that's what you're wanting to do. So we're going to put sad. Oops, I didn't tape the rest of the good, the happy. I'll do go back to that in just a second. So sad I'm going to put here. And these are the different words that sometimes can describe why we're sad. We read in the book that the, you miss someone or um, something happened that made you sad, a thought or a, a picture or something like that. But she says that there's different ones and it's disappointed, upset, sad, Miserable. Have you ever been just miserable and don't, don't really recognize why you're miserable? 
hurt, lonely, left out, down, just feel blah. We've had days like that, right? Defeated. It's like you try to do something and do something and it just doesn't turn out. You feel depleted or deflated and also discouraged. Those are some of the other ways that which we can describe sadness because it's a whole stream of different things that create that. We want to run back really quick to the other side of, of happiness. I'm going to cut these in half so I can get them on my paper. So I'm going to cut this right here. This one says excited, positive, and goofy. Do you like to be goofy? I like to be goofy sometimes. It's just fun. And it helps, and it makes other people laugh. So we're going to add these to this list right here. Goofy. And this one is joy and hopeful. Hopeful such a good word to think about when things are not bad, but not the greatest. But we know that it, there's always the possibility of it turning around and being exciting and fun and goofy sometimes. So we're going to put that down here. I forgot to put that down. Okay. So there's that part. We added the rest of the happiness words and positive. There's all kinds of things in there. So let's go over to this one. And this one is anxious. Anxious. Sometimes that's, that's a pretty big word. I'm going to put that there. And lots of times, anxious covers a whole lot of things. And some of the other categories, I know we looked at some of those on the, in the book, but the, that feeling covers so many different things. Like this one says nervous, when you're going someplace and doing something new that you've never done before. And it says lost, overwhelmed. How many times do you feel overwhelmed? It's like you have so many things that you need to get accomplished and only a little bit of time to do it in and it just feels like there's just not enough of you to get it all done. So there's, and lost. You don't necessarily physically are lost, but sometimes you can feel that way, that you can't particularly get yourself moving in a certain direction to find the, find the answer, the solution to what you're searching for. And sometimes that, that lost feeling leads, leads from stress. You know, being, just can't figuring out what you do next. So that, that one. And then uneasy. Have you ever had uneasy feelings about something? Like uh, you're thinking about a project and just, I just don't feel really strong about it. Um, do I really want to step into doing this and, and, and I don't know how I want to make it come out? And that can feel very uneasy. Um, and then the more you think about it, you can move from uneasy to the next list that we're going to be doing, which is confident. So we're going to put those over here. But uneasy is another word that can describe anxious and worried. And sometimes... Do you ever feel invisible, like people don't see you? Or you're, um, you have a challenge or something, and, and uh, maybe at the moment you're feeling that. Nobody sees that, you have a, see that you need some help or some assistance, and you feel invisible. And sometimes those kind of feelings can creep up and, and uh, add some things. Embarrassed is another one. You ever been embarrassed about something? I have lots of times. And it's like you, you walked into the wrong door or the wrong room. Or one of the other ones is that, and I can remember this when I was, I was a kid. Well, kid. I was probably, I don't know, maybe eight or nine years old. And we used to go to drive-in movies. I'm, there's no drive-in movies that I know of anymore. But you used to be able to go to a drive-in movie. And, uh, and it was always dark. And when the, sh when the movie was on the big screen, and if you had to go into the restroom or something, and then you came back, and I can remember being so embarrassed that I opened up the wrong car to get back. I didn't get back into my parents' car. I got into somebody else's car because I couldn't tell the, when the lights were out. So that was very embarrassing. 
<laughs> but the people were very nice, and they helped me find my parents' car. But it was still very embarrassing <laughs> at the moment when I did that. But like I said, they were very nice people, and they, they um, helped me move through feeling so embarrassed over that kind of a situation. So anyway, so here's our anxious. So we got these going here, this guy here, and we went over some of the words that, that uh, you know, create the feelings that we, that we can describe how we are feeling. All right, now the next one we go to is confident. And that, that confident comes in lots of different words. I wonder if you, you guys can think of any. Think of any for a few seconds and see if I come up with the same words as Diane did that wrote the book. And she says, confidence is when you're proud of something you've done that helps build your confidence. Brave for trying something new that you've never done, bef done before. That's feeling confident, like, I've never done this. In fact, I worked on a project that I've never done before. And I did it, and it came out wonderful. I was very happy and very excited about how it came out. But in the process, it was like, oh my goodness, am I going to get this right? Is it going to look OK? It creates lots of feelings that you're going through. But my end feeling is that I'm confident because I was brave to try something I've never done before. So that was, that was a good description for me to recognize and know that that's, that's where I was, how I was feeling. Uh, when I said, yes, I think I can do that. But I did. I, I went ahead and I said, okay, I'm, I know I'm going to be able to figure this out. But I had to be brave to say, yes, I can try that. I'll try and see if I can do that. So that takes confidence in knowing that you have talents and things that you can use to create those things. Our chart's getting very cool, isn't it? And then we're going to go over here, and we have our one that we really love, loved. How do we feel loved? How do we feel loved, and how do we feel appreciated? And it's the, the cool part about making a chart like this is to remind us that we have lots of feelings about lots of things. And when we recognize those feelings about ourselves, as the book was telling us, it's easy to see it in someone else. But the first part is to discover it within yourself. Because when we can discover something within ourselves about something we're doing or something we have fun with, we get to love the experience, love the people we're doing it with, and love the, the how it comes out. So this, these, she says, loved, and special. We do feel special when we're loved, right? And special. And what are the other words she said? Cared for when you're loved. Yes, you feel very cared for and appreciated. And I think one of the things that uh, the little, the picture in the book was that, um, I think it was the little girl, or maybe it was the little boy, that uh, felt appreciated when he received a thank you card for something that he did which gives us a clue that if we, someone has share, shared their love and their, their um, feelings for us by sending a thank you card, hands it right back to them and tells them that you recognize the feelings, the feelings that they had when they sent the thank you card, that they appreciated something that you did or something that you gave them, and that you're giving that back, which is really a very cool way to do things. Okay, so there's that one. Okay, so there's that. We did the ones that has the with sound and vocal uh, voice tones and volume gives you clues to the feelings that people are having. And, um, and the last one was this one with the picture that shows us. The, and body language says a lot because I can almost bet that you can walk in the house and your mom can say, what's wrong? What's the matter? Is something the matter? Does some, you need some help? Because of the way we're walking, if we're slouching or we're in a hurry or, or um, you know, that. And then sometimes we're in some of these other moods 
like we feel stressed or uneasy or about something like that. And our body language can definitely tell our family how we're feeling. And if they're really good emotion detectives, they'll be able to say, oh, something is amiss. We need to find out what that is so we can help. And sometimes we just feel like we're not ready to talk or we're not ready to, to share how we're feeling. And we just need to be quiet until we get to that place where we're in enough have created enough comfort for ourselves that we can uh, share how we're feeling or the, the help that we may need in whatever we're dealing with, okay? Okay, so there's that one. And oh, I have, well, I already glued that down. So this pretty much gives us the, um, the things. And remember, facial expressions are clues to all of our emotions. And I've just got to put, facial expressions are clues to all of this, to all the ways in which we feel and we, we have experiences and how we're able to put all of those down. So maybe having a chart like this that you can create, you could create it any way you'd like, that um, you can look at it and go, that's how I'm feeling today. Now, how do I want to feel? I feel like that. Can I think of a different way that I want to feel? And maybe you can find that in the chart and know that how things you can do in order to get that feeling. So it can point us from that direction to this direction or this direction to that direction. It just depends on the situations and things that we're experiencing. So anyway, here's the chart. And like I said, if you wanted to get um, these pictures and things, or maybe you're really artistic and you can draw all these things, that would be fabulous if you want to do that for yourself. You can make it in a circle if you want to, but this was, the, this was the size paper that I had, so that's what I used. I used what's on hand. And uh, so that's a chart that you can, you can use to sometimes figure out what you're feeling or figure out what somebody else is feeling. And that may give you clues as to how you can step in and assist them. Okay? And that can be with your mom or your dad or your friends. But also ask first. Ask a question. Are you okay? Can I help? Those are the two, all right? So when you're trying to, when, you're, when you recognize a feeling in someone else, it's always the best to ask first. Because sometimes some people just don't, when they're feeling bad or they're feeling blue or sad, they just don't want to talk about it at that particular moment in time. But you can support them in that and go, okay, and just know that they're going to be okay, all right? So anyway, there's our chart of being emotion detective. So have a fun making it for yourself and hang it up in your room because it may be great, great clues to um, sometimes finding where you are. All right? So have a wonderful week. Enjoy all the things you're doing this week, and I look forward to seeing you the next time. So take care. Thank you.